his home. So uh, let's make him welcome as he comes tonight. Praise the Lord, Church. Thank you very much. Go along with this evening to share the word of God. And this morning we share a little bit what we are doing in Pakistan. So we have some more pictures so you can see what the Lord is doing in Pakistan. So you can see the map where you can see Pakistan is there and my home Tony Lahore. So you can see the red circle over there where we came from. So by his grace we are doing evangelism as well, preaching in different church places and praise God because there is a power in the gospel in the word of God. Many people got saved. And because of God is moving and saving the souls, that's why we are planting the churches in different places. So we are helping people, young people, you know, to feeding them because more recently we have a mass flood all over Pakistan. Thousands and thousands of people lost their home and they came on the road and nobody was, even our government was not able to reach and meet all the need of the people and praise the Lord. The Lord helped the church in Pakistan to stood and to help and meet the need of these people. Amen. So we are able to help you guys send the sport. We are able to help more than hundreds of families to provide a tank so they have a little bit shelter where they can stay with their children. So you can see the rest of the area, there is a lot of water, but we help them to give these tents so where they can survive for a few weeks or months, whatever. So this is a water pump project we are doing in Pakistan this morning, I told you. And let me share a little bit about this water project, why we are doing the water pump. And because, you know, most of the time, the young girls has to travel far away to get the water. But guess what is the danger? Most of the time, the rich people, they grab these girls and rape them and sometimes kill them and put them in that field. So when we are helping them to provide this water, we are also helping them give them protection as well. Amen. So they can be saved in their village they don't need to go to travel to get the water. And that's why many villages, when we went there, they said nobody came to help us, to mix our need. Only the Church of God came us, and the body of Christ came to help us to meet all our need. And that's why they felt, you know, if you give the gospel, just gospel, and you don't care what they really need, how they can see the love of God. So this is a way to reach this community with the love of God, whatever they need, and the Lord has doing a wonderful things in those areas. Amen. This is, we are talking about the new building the Lord gave me this vision 26 years ago. I even forgot, I said, maybe that was my thought, but it is God. And three years ago, I was in Sri Lanka, Colombo, running the School of Christ. At 3 o'clock in the morning, God wake me up and spoke to me, it's time, I'm going to give you a building. I said, Lord, I don't need it. And then God spoke to me two things, receive it and conceive it. I said, okay, Lord. And after two years later, the Lord gave us miraculously the land and we started the construction. And hopefully, by the grace of God, it will be done by December. And that's the heart to train the people, pastor, because most of the pastors in Pakistan, they don't have any training. So that's the Lord put on our heart to bring those pastors from villages, from different towns, and to equip them, to train them, and to send them back so they can help the body of Christ to preach the real, the word of God and the truth of God. Because Jesus said in the Matthew chapter 24, in the last hour, the false prophet and the false teacher will be coming. Right. And that's why we need to train such people who know the truth and live in the truth and preach the truth. So keep in your prayer all these things. And you can see God's family recently, 
this church able to raise the fund, this family to free from the slavery. So we really appreciate church. And you know, I have a lot of testimony. You know, many people get said, we have nothing, but we have been crying and praying. Lord, can you send someone to help us and pay over debt and set us free? And many times, you guys are the answer of their prayers. And see the smile on their faces when they're free from the slavery. And some of them, they have been in slavery 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And think about that. Your contribution may change their whole life. And not only do you free them from the slavery, you also give them a new hope. You are giving them a joy. You are giving them a new and bright future. Many of children, they never have been in school. So we also have a free, free slave schools in different in free slave families. And we have more than 300 children in these six schools in different places. So we are trying to educate young children because they are not going anywhere. They are in slavery. So we help them to start a school where they can get their education. So this is the Lord helping us to do the work of God with all to you gather with your sport. So we can say thank you very much and we really appreciate all your sacrificial giving to extend the kingdom of God. And sure, let me tell you as Brother Aggie said, we are not here to establish our kingdom. We are here to extend his kingdom. Praise the Lord. And his kingdom is forever and ever. And I once again thank you very much all your giving, all your support. We really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to share a small little bit message tonight. Maybe you heard before, I have no idea, but I felt this evening to share with you. Would you please open your Bible with me this evening? First Kings. First Kings. Chapter 18. First Kings. Chapter 18, 1 8, and verse 30, 3 0. Verse 30. Next verse, I really, I really love that verse. This is a lot of stuff, church, we can see. 1 Kings, chapter 18, verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Amen. Be seated. Tonight, the title I want to give this message, Repair the Altar of the Lord. Repair the Altar of the Lord. Church, I want to tell you that something the Lord has put on my heart this evening. And the Lord showed me the first thing as a believer, as God children, as God church, we need to, to do one thing. The Lord is looking for you and for me get closer to God because there is many things going on in this world who is going, going to pull us back from the altar of God. There is many things going in this world He is going to stop us Get closer to God. And let me tell you, there is a dangerous when we go forget to have talk with God, communication with God, when we don't have time to come on the altar. Look that nation, this nation belong to God. The Lord has promised this nation, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a great nation. But look that nation, they fall back from God. They start worshiping and other God and they are worshiping God and they are also worshiping other God. And I have seen in the church people come every Sunday and worshiping God two hours and the rest of the week they are worshiping 
worshiping many things else. Their TV become their God. Their games become their God. But let me tell you this evening, let God be our God. One more time, church. Let worship God never before we did, church. You know about this story very well. Three years, there was no rain. The Lord shut the heaven. And you know why the Lord has shut the heaven? Because people have backslid from God. And there was a purpose of God to bring back His people close to God. You know, there is a time come when we say the problems, the troubles, in, when we have trust God. But there is many times. When we go far from God, then the problems come. So we have to check what is the reason behind why we are facing the dryness. Why we are facing the famine. You know, there was a great famine. But let me remind you to nature, I have sought more than a severe and great Famine in the church. There is a great famine in the church to hear the word of God. Today people don't have a time to hear from God. They love to hear everything except the word of God. We have to wait to Sunday. Somebody come and preach to me. Praise God for the great man of God. Praise God for the preacher. But let me tell you, I'm not going to wait for a week. Let God speak to me every day, church. Let me hear from God every day, church. Oh, it's not enough to hear a great sermon on Sunday. Let me hear from heaven every day, church. Every morning, every evening. Let God Go speak to me and to you, church. Yeah. But where we can hear from God, where we can talk to God, where we can meet God, and that's why we need an altar one more time, where we can talk to God, where we can meet to God, where we can hear from heaven one more time, church. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Then God spoke to Elijah. Go and hide yourself. And he hide himself for three years. My goodness. Three years. And nobody knows where is Elijah. And what he was doing for three years, I believe he was praying for three years. And how many days in three years? Maybe one more than 1,000 days. Wow. He was praying for more than 1,000 days. We have a hard time to pray for one hour. I have seen in prayer meeting. We have vanished the prayer meeting Simon to A. But when the prayer meeting start, all these people start to watch in their watch when one hour done. After 10 minutes they start their watch. I say you're done. You can leave. If you are going to talk to God, you don't need to focus to see your work. You need to look unto heaven and see the face of the Lord until he comes and listen to you and speak to you. So there was a famine, no rain. So I was looking at that passage in scripture. Why Elijah is doing all this stuff to repair the altar? Why not he prayed and the rain came? Why he called? What he did first thing is that Elijah said to unto all the people, not just few, but all the people. And what he said. He gave the invitation. He challenged them. He said, come near unto me. And church, let me tell you, I was praying before I came. I said, Lord, give us one more time a such man of God and the prophet of God in this last hour who is not going to make us happy, but make us holy one more time, church. We don't need a such preacher who give us entertainment. We need a such preacher who give us God and get us closer to God, church. Amen. You know, many times people come to church, they are looking for some kind of programs and entertainment. 
because they want to fool their church. But let me tell you, that's not the agenda of God to fool the building. Let me remind you tonight, God wants to fool his people with his love, with his compassion, with his holy God, with his power. It doesn't matter how many we are. God is looking at hungry people who are hungry for God and thirsty for God. God doesn't need a big number. God looking at faithful people, church. This nation, this world need one more Elijah in this last hour who can challenge the church. Church, come back on your altar. Come back on your first love. You have forsaken your first love, church. Yeah. Wow. Oh, may God help us. Then Elijah came. Before he prayed for the rain, he said, no, 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 I'm not going to pray. First thing, we need to repair the altar. Look at that. The altar has been broken. What altar present? He present not just to sacrifice. He present talk to God. Communicate with God. If there is no altar in the church, God is not going to speak a church. If there is no altar in your home, God is not going to visit us. If you want the visitation of God in this last hour, let's repair the altar of God one more time in your family, in the church, to meet God. Many times people is looking at a devotion book to get something new. Come on. Oh, may God help us. I don't mind to read. I love to read. But let me tell you, you cannot find God just to, in devotional book in five, five mula or five step. I'm going to tell you just one step where you can see God, where you can find God. And that's the altar of the Lord which has been broken. If we just do one thing, get closer to God. Lord, there is many things took me there from your presence, from your Calvary. And Lord, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm going to repair my altar which has been broken. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want some preacher in your life, in your family who challenge you? It's no time to sit and to watch something else. It's time to get up and repair your altar, church. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Let me ask you one question. When you heard from God, where he spoke you last time. Where you met God last time. I was telling Brother Eddie on the way to church. I said, this January, I was so sick. And three weeks, the devil came every day. You're done. You're going to die. Three weeks. I told my wife, I said, I don't know what is going on. And then third weeks, I said, Lord, what is your plan for me? And the praise the Lord in my sickness. I went on my altar. I said, let me talk to God. And let me communicate with God and let me hear from God and I said Lord what do you want to me? It's my time is done. It's my assignment is done. Then God spoke to me no sir it's not done I have something for you and you are going to be healed and I'm going to take you and use you for my glory and for my kingdom. Amen. Amen. Many people is looking the answer of your prayer. They want answer of their prayer. Yeah. Where you can get the answer of your prayer. Yeah. You need the altar of God. Right. Which we have forgotten, church. Oh, that's on my heart. God has a desire to meet you. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but that's the heart of God. Maybe you want or not, but God wants to see you on the altar one more time. God wants to see you back on the altar one more time. God wants to communicate one more time. What a great thing when God's people come on the altar and send themselves and look into heaven and say, Lord, we we need you one more time. It will really, this nation need God one more time. Yeah. Why we have a broken marriage? Why we have a broken home? Because the altar has been broken. 
That's why we have a broken marriage, broken relationship. Husband and wife have a broken relationship with among the children, have a broken relationship. But let me tell you, if we fix this altar and the Lord is going to fix everything, praise the Lord, glory to be God. We just need to do one thing, sir. We need to turn to God and get closer to God and get rid of all rubbish thing who's stopping us to get closer to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. James said, he said, get closer to God and he got closer to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you have a desire to hear from God? Yeah. Do you have a such relationship with God where you can hear from the Lord? Oh, church, don't tell me we have a great church. Praise God for a great service. But let me tell you, we don't just have a great service. We have a great God who can speak every day, who can touch every day, who can visit us every day. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, we don't need to wait for a week. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. We can talk to Him. We can visit Him. And we can see Him every day. Amen. 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 Right. But how? Oh, well, we need the altar of the Lord. So if we want to fix everything, marriage, families, what we need to do? To hear the word of God. And we need to repair the altar which has been broken. How many Christian life and relationship with God and communication has been broken? And let me tell you, it would be not happen suddenly. The devil is going to take us very slow. He's not going to pull us from the altar suddenly. He brought a many stuff in your life, in my life, to take us far away from the altar of the Lord. And look what happened. When the Israel forgot the altar, everything was shut down. Right. They have nothing to eat. There was a dryness. And let me tell you, church, I remind you, when we are not coming on the altar, everything would be dry. Everything would be a dry. Our worship would be a dry. Our prayer meeting would be a dry. Our preaching, our ministry, whatever we do, it would be dry. That's why we need the altar. Do you need the fire of God? Do you need the, the freshing spirit of God? Do you need the rain of God? Of course, we need the fire of God. We need the rain of God one more time in this last hour. But how is it possible? We need to repair the altar. Amen. How many Christians have ignored the altar of the Lord? And they don't have time to come on the altar. Repair the altar. What does mean? Come near to God. Praise the Lord. Oh, church, let me tell you what a great thing. If somebody get closer to God and he can see God, he can hear God, he can touch God. Praise the Lord. Many times we say, Lord, touch me. But let me tell you, church, this evening, it's time we need to touch God. We need to touch the throne of God. Like a lady who was sick last 12, 12 years. She said, I'm going to touch him. It doesn't matter if he's going to touch me or not. But I believe if I touch him, I will be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You can meet God every day, church. Yeah. Praise God. Oh, it yeah. is awesome. Oh, the God, the world is looking for God, and God is waiting for you and for me. And he's looking at you and me on the altar. And he said, why you have left this altar? Why you have forsaken this altar? Why you ignore me? Why you ignore me? And no relationship with me, church. It's time to come back. That's why Elijah, before he prayed, he invited people. He said, come near to me. What does it mean? I believe that's an invitation for you and for me. To tonight, God is calling us get closer to me. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, why not we ask the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, show me those things who hinder us to me get closer to you. 
and many times the small thing hinders you and stops you. Why we need Elijah? Elijah bring people back. Jesus came on this earth two thousand years ago. He died on the cross, and because of the cross, we get closer to God. And church, I tell you, what well, this is a great time. We are living in this last hour. If you want to see revival, I'm not talking about just revival service. I know we have a plenty revival service, but let me remind you and let me tell you, we really need a revival. And revival doesn't come just have a great service. Revival comes when we repair the altar and put our body as a living sacrifice. And when we go to meet God, then God is going to meet you individually. It doesn't matter where you it's time to repair the altar in the body of Christ. It's time to repair the altar at your home. And let me tell you, two, 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 two years ago, me and my family, we were praying at our home. And my two children, my daughter and my son, he got sent that night on that altar. The Holy Ghost came. Amen. And both of them cried. And they said, Lord, Papa, we need God. Oh, praise God. They repent. They're born again by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We gave everything to our children. We gave everything to this generation. And we took the altar of God. And look at that. Where we are going. Where we are going. Oh, let me tell you, child, why not we give the altar of God one more time to our generation? Praise the Lord. Glory to be God. Why not we repair the altar of God at my home? Let my children see what my papa is doing, what my mama is doing. He's not watching a game. He's not playing the game. He's talking on the altar. He's visiting God. He's seeking God. He's talking to God. And God is going to meet. When I'm at home, what my children see me, do, I'm doing. You know, there's many altars has been broken. Maybe there was a time you have a great relationship with God, but the problems came, trials came, suffering came, challenges came, and we forgot that altar. But may God help us, church, and that's the message of my heart. God is calling you tonight. He said, my son, my daughter, get closer to me. Come near to me. I'm looking for you. I'm going to do a great thing in you and to you. I'm going to visit this nation. Do you want to see a revival among this country? Do you want to see, let Black's like people come back in the body of Christ. We need the altar as much we are going closer to God. God is going to bring those has been backslide. Amen. So Elijah invite people. Not just few. He said come all the people. What does mean? I was oh Lord, you need the whole family not just one member. Not two. God is calling all family, come closer to me. Praise the Lord. God said, bring your son to closer to me. Bring your daughter closer to me. Before this world took your children, let them closer to God. Help them bring on the altar. Hallelujah. You know, there was a mess, lady. You know, 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. When he, her husband died, she came to Elisha. She said, the creditor came to took my son. So Elisha asked, what do you have? She said, have a little oil. Oh, what do you have in the house? Oh, maybe we have a great music, praise God. We have everything. We have a good sound system, great. Praise the Lord. We have a good singer, great. But do we have the oil? Do we have the Holy Ghost? Do we have the fire of God in the house of God? Do we have the presence of God? If we want to save our children, the music is not going to save our generation. That the Holy Ghost will save our people, save this nation, church. Yeah. Amen. You give a good music and young generation have a great fun. You know, I was traveling in Texas. I saw a one church have a sign. 
on the church board. Have a fun on Sunday. So I looked at, I called a friend of mine who was good at me. I said, look, Dad, today the church have a fun. But if there is a fire, there will be no fun. How many do you have a fireplace in your home? Praise God. Most of the people have a fireplace. But do we have a fire of God? How many people have lost the fire of God? Oh, look that. When Peter lost the fire of God, he tried to catch some fire from somewhere and he tried Jesus. Oh, what a tragedy. When we lost the fire of God and I believe the Lord is going to set us fire one more time, church. That's what Jeremiah said. Your word is like a fire in me. And I cannot consume. I cannot hold it, God. How many people have lost the fire of God? And they have fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. You cannot play with fire. Right. Right. Wow. You cannot play with fire. Come on. Many people get playing. You know, I was invited in Colombo to run the School of Christ. There was a big church, 2,000 people. And the pastor invited me to preach in his church, Assembly of God Church. And that pastor, I'm ashamed to tell you what he said. He said, I don't care whatever you do the rest of week. Just come on Sunday. I was shocked. I said, maybe you don't understand, Pastor. This building is not just the temple of God. We are the temple of God. As much I am holy in this place, I have to be holy outside this building because God living me. There is a Lord glory to be God. We need to live a holy life. It doesn't matter where I am. And it doesn't matter if somebody see me or not. But my God is watching me to live life with God, to walk in the holiness of God in the fear of the Lord. So God called Elijah. He hid himself. And the time came, God spoke to Elijah, go and show yourself. Wow. Go and, and I believe in this last cover. The church been hiding for a long time. And God is calling, church, it's time to show. go and show yourself. Show what do you have. The answer of these people. How many people lost in this world? You know, we have a great service, praise God. But who's going to bring those souls who is dying in sin? What is the mission? Mission is that go and preach the gospel. What is the mission? Go and bring the soul in the kingdom of God. I was preaching one of the conferences in Pakistan. I told maybe 400 pastor was there and preacher was there. I said, preacher, maybe you have a desire to fill your pew. You have a praying to fill your pew. But let me tell you, God is not interested in just fill the pew. He wants to fill heaven with the people. If we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is a power in the gospel. And Lord God is going to save the soul. Do you have a fire of God? Have you seen if you saw a fire somewhere, how you respond? If somebody have a fire, how you respond? You ran. You will go to see like Moses when he saw the bushes was burning. He turned. I want to see what is going on. And let me tell you, church, this night. If church is bur the church is burning with the fire of the Lord, you get attraction of this world. You will get the attraction of this world. I have not seen the fire. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the journal church. Keep in your mind. I have seen the smoke from the church not fire. Because you know why? The altar has been broken. And it's time church to repair your altar. And not only here, but at your home. And when you come on the altar and God going to visit you and to communicate with you, who knows, you have a revival at your home where your children will be get saved. Do you want revival? Yes. Do you think we need it? Yes, sir. 
or in this last cover we need, and how we can get revival, how we can accept something from God if we do against the word of God. Right. I'm telling you, church, God is waiting for us. Amen. He's looking for us, and he's calling us, he's, he's telling us, it's time to repair the altar of God in this last hour. He's calling us to repair the altar of God in this critical time. You know, look at God's schools, church, in college, they took the Bible. They took the prayer. You know, the devil is afraid of that. Right, right. The devil is afraid of that. You know, in my country, back Pakistan, if you have a worshiper, a great worshiping service, the church would be full. When you have a prayer meeting, nobody comes. I told my people, I said, we have a problem. Right. We come to listen to music that they're going to hear from heaven. So what kind of preacher we need? And I pray this evening, may God rise as such woman of God and man of God from this church who stood like Elijah and go and help people to get closer to God. Right. And you can start from your home church. Would you like to go back and say, Lord, I have ignored your altar for a long time. I was sitting, watching a lot of things, but now I'm going to stop everything. I'm going to seek the face of the Lord in this last hour one more time. Oh, tell Lord, I don't want to lose that fire. Oh, many people have lost the fire of God. They have lost the love of God. They are coming to church, they are serving, but there is no fire. It is no far. So Elijah called them, invited them, and he said, repair your altar. Repair the altar that has been broken. Right. Three years has been broken, and nobody noticed. Nobody talked about that. Then God told Elijah, go and show yourself, and go and tell my people, it's no time to pray, it's time to repair the altar. I don't just want to spend one and a half hour every Sunday and leave. I want to spend and be with my Lord every day. Praise the Lord. And that's why we need the altar of God, church. Do you want to carry the presence of God? Do you want to carry the fire of God? Do you want to carry the anointing of God? Then we need to come on the altar. If you have lost the fire of God, let me tell you, you can catch the fire of God one more time. If you go and repair the altar and present your body as living sacrifice, you will catch that fire, church. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to close. I'm going to close. You know, Elijah repaired that altar and he prayed. And he prayed. Not a long prayer, very short prayer. And the fire fall. Thank you, Lord. And let me tell you, before the rain came, before the blessing came, we need the fire of God, church. Praise the Lord. Glory to be God. God is ready to send the fire because Elijah challenged that false prophet, the Lord who answered by prayer, he is the Lord. Why he said that? Because he believed my God is able to answer our prayer. He believed God is able to answer by fire, church. Do you believe that? Or do you, if you are called, if you are called, look at the book of Revelation, the first church, God said, no, you are not hard and not called. And how many people in the church have the same spiritual condition? When they come in the presence of God, they have a great service. When they leave, nothing. I can tell you many testimonies, but I don't have a time. So Elijah prayed, and the fire fall, and the people fall, and the rain fall. You know, many people are looking for refreshing, for rain, but before the rain came, we need the fire of God. What fire does? He consume everything which is not God. 
Present your body as a living sacrifice. If we want the fire of God, we need to repair the altar of God and we need to present our body as living sacrifice. Fire doesn't come on the empty altar, church. God is looking for a sacrifice. Many people say, Oh, God doesn't need my body nor my heart. He can see my heart. But in Romans chapter 12, Paul said, God needs your body. Give your body to God as a living sacrifice. I was reading Watchman, a great man of God. One day he was walking, his friend asked him, would you please come have play with us card? He said, no, I don't have a hand. He said, what do you mean you don't have a hand? You have both your hand. Why would you come and play with us these cards? He said, just today I have a hand, but I gave my life and this has is not my hand. This hand belongs to Jesus. The time we have, it's belong to God. When you wake up early morning, do you have an altar where you can talk to God? Before I take my coffee, can I go to my altar? Lord, before I make my body refreshing, let my spirit make you fresh. With the presence of God. With the anointing of God. And church, God want to visit us one more time if we repair our altar one more time. Why not we stand tonight? And God is calling us individually. God is calling us as a family. And if you want the visitation of God, if you want to see a revival in this church, in this community, in this among this country, if you want to see your people, your children get saved, we need the earth altar at our home which has been broken for a long a long time and the Lord is pushing on my heart but Eddie there is many people have ignored the altar of God there is many people has broken altar at their home and they are struggling they are struggling they are coming to you and asking your prayer but God says it's time to repair your altar and come to meet me on that altar I'm going to meet you on that altar Do you need the fire of God? Oh, yeah. Do you want to see the move of God in your life, in your ministry, in your family, among your country? God is looking for a such man of God. Oh, why not you become a prophet for your nation? Why not you become a prophet for your family? Why not you become a prophet for your children and tell your children, we are going to repair the altar and we are going to meet God every morning or whatever, every evening, what time do you have? And say, family, let's this altar, we are going to repair one more time. We are not going to ignore God. We enjoy his blessing. But we need the fire of God one more time in this last hour, church. And God is ready to visit us. God is ready to pour us spirit if we come on the altar. Yes. Are you ready tonight? Yes. Church, would you please start worshiping? And I want to challenge you. Who is going to repair this altar tonight? Yes. Who is going to repair the altar one more time? Oh, many of us have ignored it. Many of us forgotten it. There was altar has been broken. But God said, if you fix your altar, I will fix everything. God is saying, it's enough, it's enough. It's enough, it's enough. It's time to come back to on the altar. It's enough and enough, sir. It's time to stood for God.